So my 650 is in for a service. This is what they've lent me. The Honda Cross Tourer, which is effectively the VFR 1200 in the adventure style. So let's go and have a little play and give you some views and thoughts. Yeah, so it's a 1200cc V4 engine. It puts out about 125, 130-ish horsepower. Shaft driven. For me, the interesting one that I want to really see is the torque. This has 125 newton meters of torque. To put that into perspective, it's about 10 or 15 newton meters more than my Fireblade has. So less horsepower, but more torque. And you really can feel that torque. That's a really odd sensation because it doesn't feel like sports bike quick and that whole thing which is probably to do with the whole seating position and the power delivery but you have a quick flick down at the speedo and you are absolutely motoring it's deceptively fast so this engine is definitely uh, tuned for kind of middle mid-range grunt only revs to about eight and a half nine thousand but the power bands there, whoa! <laughs> Certainly not, not as quick as the blade, but normal roads? Wow, that's more than you'd need. Plenty of grunt for overtaking. 55 miles an hour, fourth gear, open the throttle up. Effortless, absolutely effortless. First thing I noticed about this bike was its size. It is huge. And then when you sling your leg over, the weight. I'm picking it up off the side stand. It's 290-ish, 280-something, 290 kilograms in weight. It is a big, heavy bike. And I'm, uh, yeah, six foot one-ish. I can sit astride, it's quite wide around the knees. Have a look down there. Quite wide, sat astride the uh, fuel tank. I can get my feet just about flat on the ground with it but the moment you start to want to manoeuvre I'm kind of on the balls of my feet rather than flat so even me at my height I'm conscious of, uh, of the size and weight of this bike I wouldn't want to have to manhandle this around on uneven ground but then having said that the moment you uh, get it going and the wheels rolling the weight just completely disappears. I know that sounds like a bit of a cliche and everyone always says, oh yeah, the weight just disappears when you feel it. It really does. If I hadn't looked at the specs, there is no way, and you know, just jumped on and started riding it, there is no way that I would have guessed that this is not shy off 300 kilos in weight. drive out of corners. So seating position as you'd imagine, very adventure style, straight bars, very comfy seat, very kind of typical L-shaped or Z-shaped, kind of straight bum, legs, things, everything feels very comfortable. This is the sort of style of bike I think I will be getting when the uh, 650 comes in to be changed in. I want something for doing commuting miles, motorway miles. I can ride all day and not feel like I've ridden at the end of it. I think
think I said before in some other rides that I don't like these these style mirrors where they're bolted on but they're up there on the handlebars rearward visibility is superb got none of my arms in the uh, mirrors I can just see behind as if I was driving in a car the mirrors are good ergonomics are good switch gear typical Honda so yeah it feels there I'm flat-footed on the ground but it's a bit of a stretch let's get this on the motorway which is where it should really excel so this has got the standard shorty screen on here there we are 75 ish miles an hour it's fine gonna bit around the chest area a bit on my helmet a bit of wind buffeting but nothing major wind protection around my legs and knees is really really good as you'd expect from this wide fairing I know the, the newer models come with a bigger screen you can get additional higher screens which I think I would which would probably eliminate this I mean, if I tuck down I mean that's completely out of the of course you wouldn't ride it like this but it gives you some idea that with a big screen Oh, that'd be lovely. Hand guards, hand deflectors. So it stops the wind blowing and also in the winter will keep your hands a bit warmer. There are 70 miles an hour in sixth gear. I'm at about three and three quarter revs. Just under 4,000, three and a half, three and three quarters. Don't know about range on this. 21-ish uh, litre fuel tank, so I would imagine at least 200 miles. Suspension is on the soft side, but very comfortable. Go okay, for this sort of riding on motorways and everything. Hardly feel anything through it, especially with this nice comfy seat. on a little bit does the front starts to feel a little on the light side so brakes brakes are very powerful very good but they feel a bit wooden if I'm honest certainly no shortage of stopping power they're uh, Nissan four piston I think on the front 320 ish twin discs so yeah, no problems with the brakes, they just, they just lack feel, they are very wooden. That initial first grab is very mushy. Let's see how wide this bike is for filtering. You'd think with its weight and size, that it'd be a nightmare in traffic, but it's remarkably manoeuvrable and very easy to, to balance and slow speed control. You know, slipping the clutch, using the rear brake, very good, very easy. What I do like on this is um, that the not just the brake lever is span adjustable, but so is the clutch lever. It's a nice little touch. But I've also noticed that the clutch is uh, on the heavier side. But yeah, she's a bit wide. So look, there's a gap there which I'm not even going to attempt to get through. But on the blade of the 650, I'd be straight through there like a shot. So it's times like that that you really do notice the extra size of the bike. In terms of toys, very, very limited. Uh, ABS is standard, obviously. And there is some um, traction control, what Honda call torque control. You can see the buttons down here on the fairing. Three levels, one, two, three. I've left it in what the uh, dealer gave me, which I presume is the most intrusive. The dash is very easy to read. Speed in the middle, gear indicator, rev counter at the top, which is it's fine to see the uh, bars going up and down, get an idea. But to look at the numbers, it's, well, I can't see them. Outside temperature, 
It's functional, does what it needs to do. But if I'm honest, it looks really dated. A lot of modern bikes with at least a monochrome LCD screen, but more and more with the TFT full color. This split thing bit here, I think it does look dated. The roll on from any speed in any gear is awesome. It is such a lazy bike and it feels very refined. For a big bike with uh, off road ish wheels, they're spoked but they're tubeless. I think a 19 inch up front, 17 inch on the rear, and certainly with um, a dual purpose type rubber. Let's see. It does handle, but it does take a little bit of, of effort. You really do have to push on the bars to get that change of direction. It's not what I call a quick turning bike. But once it's tipped over, high riding position gives you fantastic view up the road, particularly for overtaking. Right, going round the roundabout here. Corners very, very nicely. gear 30 miles an hour barely ticking over roll the throttle on just picks up and goes it around as you can see it's more than capable of getting on a quite a lick around some twisty roads I suppose the thing with it is that because of the soft suspension slightly heaviness whilst it will do the twisties at quite a quick speed doesn't feel like it's natural environment feels like you're having to grab it by the scruff of the neck and really force it to do it rather than it just being natural and flowing and yeah, that's to be expected isn't it the fact that it can do it and do it so capably is amazing in its own self I think I don't know what it is but I can't quite get used to the throttle either it's a little bit snatchy fine once you open it up but just a very partial throttle openings. It does feel snatchy. So let's have a look round her. Here she is. Shaft driven. Single sided swing arm. Looks really nice I think. Missing four pistons up front. Brakes are 
adequate for the machine. As I said, a bit wooden. Quite like this silver black colour. Front, got that beaky look like most adventure bikes have got. I mean, as ever, the Honda fit and finish is second to none. I mean, that paintwork is beautiful. Lovely metallic grey there. Really good quality. Switch gear is all standard Honda fare. Quality of the plastics is good. Welding again on the frame. I, you know what you're getting. Lifting her up, oh my word, oh, that is a heavy, heavy bike, really heavy. So, swing my leg over, there, I am flat footed, At the moment you want to move around the pegs or anything, Moving around, you're a balls of your feet. Also now with a bit more uh, city riding under my uh, belt, the gearbox is not the smoothest I've ever uh, experienced. Quite clonky, particularly between first and second. It's rather odd, going from neutral Clicking down into first, it doesn't feel as solid. You don't get that reassuring clunk down into first that knows that first is engaged that I'm used to in a lot of bikes. I've been thinking all the time, oh, am I actually in first? It doesn't feel like it's properly engaged. It is. Maybe that's just a quirk. See there, that changed down from third to second. A bit notchy, a bit agricultural. That's probably the word I'm looking for. I feel like I'm on a rough and rugged bike rather than a smooth, silky tourer. And you probably accept it on this bike. This, that's the same on the VFR, the sports tourer. Probably be thinking, hmm. Okay, so I've been riding this bike now for probably a good couple of hours. I've done some city riding, done motorway riding, I've done a road riding. So what do I think about it? Well, it is an incredibly capable all-round bike. The engine is a peach, bags and bags of torque, with the delivery like a brick through a plate glass window. You are going much faster on this bike than you think you're going. So you really do have to keep an eye on that speedo. Uh, it's effortless. But having said that, it does it all without any drama or anything that is kind of in a way a bit too refined. It's not so refined that you're that you could be mistaken for thinking you're riding a bike, but it's refined to the extent where it becomes a bit clinical. I'd love to come on here and say to you all, oh I've had the most fun riding this bike that I've ever had, but I'd be lying. It hasn't been fun at all. It's been very functional. Don't get me wrong. Uh, if this was a bike that you were commuting 30, 40, 50 miles each way to work every day over a mix of roads, you'd love it. You'd absolutely love it. Someone said to me now, right, I need you to go down to Land's End, through down in the depths of Cornwall. I'll be doing some motorway work, I'll be doing some fast day roads, I'll be doing some twisty roads. Uh, you've got to go and deliver something for me. Give me a taller screen and I'd be more than happy to jump on this bike and do it. Really, really comfortable. I've got no aches or pains. Quite happily ride this without stopping for another couple of hours. But it is all a little bit too sanitised and clinical. I think a great way to sum this bike up is it is jack of all trades, but it's master of none. And I think when you compare it with what else is on the market, you'd probably struggle to 
go ahead and buy one of these to compete. It's got the engine and the performance and the smoothness there, but it's a bit dated with the uh, display. Where's the LED headlights? Yeah, where's the six axis gyro, cornering ABS, anti wheelie, all the all the bells and whistles, electronic bells and whistles that most of the competitors have got. You know, the GS, the S1000XR, the Multistrada. I think you would really struggle to, to buy this brand new with everything else that's out there on the market. However, having said that, perhaps this makes more sense as a used buy. This particular bike, for example, is a 2016 plate just over a thousand miles on the clock and this ladies and gentlemen can be yours for the pricey sum of ten thousand pounds now for ten grand this is a lot of bike for the money and i think this probably makes more sense as a second hand buy than it does brand new so in conclusion really really impressive bike I do like it uh, and if you needed something just as a workhorse and you had other stuff to play with in the garage for other fun bits and pieces, you could probably get away with this. But it is all a little bit dull. It doesn't put a huge grin on my face every time I crack open the throttle. It's not something I'd go into the garage every day and yearn to jump on and ride. It really is one of those bikes that get on and you use it because it's so damn efficient at what it does. You could be chucking it down with rain. You could get on this, go to work, wouldn't be a drama. In fact, nothing is ever a drama on this bike and that's part of the problem. So, well done Honda. Brilliantly engineered. Come on, update it with a few more gizmos, tricks, make it a bit more competitive in that way. And please, try and put a bit more fun into it but as ever big thanks out to uh, Hatfields of Crowthorn the Honda dealer there Martin and his team who have always looked after me superbly well and have lent me this uh, to have a go on while my 650 is being serviced today really good guys they'll always do you a fantastic deal in there they're a small family run business, nothing is uh, too much for them. So big thanks to them. Hope you enjoyed this, hope you found it useful, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheerio.